Hello, everyone, and welcome to Automation and Integration, Two Sides of the Same Coin. My name is Samantha Scaglione, and I'm part of the a priori product management team. Before we get started, I have just a few housekeeping notes to cover. The attendee lines will be on mute throughout today's session. We will be taking questions throughout the session utilizing the chat panel on the event website. So please enter any questions you have on the costinsight.com chat panel, not in the Zoom chat. I'll try to answer as many questions at the end of the session as possible, but you can also feel free to schedule a meeting with me via the meeting scheduler on the event website. To schedule a meeting with me on costinsight.com, near the chat panel, choose people, select my name, Samantha Scaglione, and you should see options to schedule a meeting. Alternatively, you can feel free to contact me via email and I'll make sure to share my email details with you at the end of our session. We have uploaded a PDF of today's presentation, which you should be able to access in the files panel. And I think with that, we should be all set to begin. As I mentioned, my name is Samantha Scaglione. I have been with Apriori for a little over two years as a product manager. And I am extremely proud to be a part of the Cost Insight Generate team, building a priori's automated solution. So how does automation work? How is it driven? In the absence of manual inputs, the data to drive analysis still has to come from somewhere. And in the case of the Cost Insight Generate solution, that somewhere is in your existing enterprise systems. Close integration with these systems is what makes our automation so powerful. And I'm really excited to dive into this topic with you today. So to start off, we'll walk through a brief introduction of the Cost Insight Generate solution. From there, we'll discuss extracting inputs from existing systems, Cost Insight Generate supported integrations, and we'll end by discussing strategies for triggering automated analysis. Looking at a sample Cost Insight Generate workflow to start us off, we can begin with the design engineer at their workstation designing a component in CAD and checking that CAD model into PLM. On a daily cadence, a priori queries the PLM system for parts modified in the past day and returns their CAD models and attribute information to the a priori cloud to kick off analysis. This is just one example of a trigger to kick off analysis, but we will discuss alternate approaches in more detail later in today's session. After the analysis is complete, key results like fully burdened costs, piece part costs, cycle time, and DFM risk rating can be authored back to the PLM system. A report can also be attached back as a related object to the parts that a priori analyzed. Now the same insights authored to PLM are also included in Cost Insight Generate email notifications. In this workflow, after automated analysis, a designer is notified with cost mm -hmm. and manufacturability results for all the parts they've been working mm -hmm. on via email. Parts with the most severe manufacturability mm -hmm. defects are color coded in the email notification mm -hmm. to highlight to the design engineer exactly what requires immediate attention. Reports can also be attached to email for an added level of detail. From email or report attachment, the designer is just one click away from opening analyzed parts in the a priori cloud to review design guidance and detected manufacturability issues in cost insight design. And based on the feedback provided in cost insight design, the design engineer can iterate to optimize their design for cost and manufacturability. In today's session, we'll be focusing on steps one and two of this workflow, honing in on the integration and data that's transferred to drive analysis. If you find yourself interested in diving into steps three through five, 
to look at the results of automated analysis in more detail, I would recommend checking out my session later today in the right place at the right time, automated feedback for design engineers. So focusing on steps one and two, a designer checks their model into PLM and a priori's automated analysis through cost insight generate is kicked off. But what inputs are driving that analysis? Let's look at a few. The first is the CAD model. At the core of a priori's analysis is tight integration with the digital twin. Extracting GCDs, or geometric cost drivers, from the 3D CAD model to automate costing allows and empowers a broader audience of non-experts to own the cost of their products. Process group, the manufacturing category. This tells a priori how to interpret the CAD model's geometry and what processes to evaluate. Digital factory. This is a digital representation of a physical factory contextualized with regional data. Material. This is the chemical composition or alloy used to produce a part. So for cost insight generate to perform automated analysis in the background without end user intervention, a priori needs some logic to find this input information. And lucky for us, there are a lot of places that the solution allows you to look for a value. When cost insight generate workflows, which you can think of as the recipe for automated execution, are defined, an admin would specify query criteria to determine the set of parts that should be analyzed, what set of parts are considered ready. In the workflow we discussed before, we determined that the parts checked in within the past day are considered ready for analysis. But several cost insight generate customers use the query criteria more precisely to identify a section of parts based on attributes like product, context, department, or material group. This sectioning allows these customers to specify inputs as constants at the workflow level. For example, if I know all of the parts in a given context will be plastic molding, then I can set that process group as a workflow constant. Workflow constants are the first place that cost insight generate will attempt to look for costing inputs. The next place cost insight generate will check is the PLM system. When setting up your integration with PLM, a priori fields can be mapped to attributes in PLM. That means, for example, that the a priori process group field could map to a PLM attribute called commodity type. Again, at the workflow level, optionally, a default value can be set to be used if no value is found for the specified PLM attribute. So in our example of commodity type, if that attribute was empty for a given part, a default value specified at the workflow level could be used. The fourth source for costing input values is through PMI attribute mapping. Semantic CAD attribute mapping can be defined per CAD format through an XML loaded through a priori professional via AppStream. We'll talk about this in more detail a little bit later in the session. If no value is found in the workflow in PLM or through mapped CAD attributes, we can default to step five of this costing inputs order of precedence. We will check for default values in costing service settings. Costing service settings represent global fallback values that can be configured in Cost Insight Connect, again, optionally. The last place that Cost Insight Generate will look for costing input values is in the digital factory's defaults itself. So we've discussed all of the places that attributes could come from. Let's talk about in the context of the inputs that we looked at a little bit earlier, where we might expect them to come from. The CAD model could be read directly from PLM, from the data set linked to the part object we are analyzing. 
process group might be read from a PLM part attribute, for example, commodity type, which we referenced before. And if no value is present in PLM for that attribute, a default set at the workflow level might be used. The digital factory could be set based on PMI attribute mapping, perhaps mapped flexibly based on a region CAD attribute. And material, if not present in PLM or the CAD model, this could be set using the digital factory default for the selected process group. The data to drive a priori's analysis already lives in your existing systems, and Cost Insight Generate is capable of integrating with your systems to analyze this data automatically. And PLM is just one key system that Cost Insight Generate integrates with today. So let's take a closer look at some of Cost Insight Generate's supported integrations. Cost Insight Generate currently supports direct integrations with both Siemens Team Center and PTC Windchill PLM. In addition to what we call a file system integration, we'll be looking at the categories of PLM integrations and file system integrations in more detail in just a few minutes. But coming in 22.1, Cost Insight Generate will be supporting a new category of PLM integration, uh, integration to Dassault's Inovia. So what does PLM integration look like in the context of Cost Insight Generate? Well, we've talked about extracting input information to drive analysis from PLM, but Cost Insight Generate's integration facilitates bi-directional communication. In addition to identifying components ready for analysis and sourcing input information, a priori's insights around cost and manufacturability can be authored back to PLM through attribute or reports for enterprise consumption. When we discuss costing inputs and all of the places that Cost Insight Generate is equipped to look for them, I alluded to mapping fields between a priori and PLM. Mapping is supported for both standard out of the box and user defined a priori fields to allow these fields and a priori's analysis to leverage the wealth of information already stored in PLM as the system of record. In addition to direct mapping of a PLM attribute value to an a priori field, digital factories can optionally be configured to respond flexibly to attributes mapped from PLM. For example, uh, some of our Cost Insight Generate customers will include certain finishing operations through custom digital factory logic based on the value of a UDA mapped from PLM. And that degree of flexibility is also supported for PMI attribute mapping. Semantic CAD attributes can drive production inputs even in the absence of an exact match. You might have a CAD property called production location that drives the selection of digital factory. You can define your mapping so the a priori China digital factory is selected whenever the CAD value says Beijing, Shanghai, or another Chinese city. Now we've talked about PLM integration and cost and say generate support for PMI attribute mapping. It's important to note that PMI attribute mapping is still supported for cost and say generates non PLM integration, the file system. The file system integration is an alternate way to drive cost insight generate workflows. In the file system, an analysis is driven by an input spreadsheet, similar to what you might be familiar with in bulk costing and analysis. Each row in this spreadsheet represents a scenario to be processed, and each column represents the set of inputs to be used. The file system integration opens the door for the input spreadsheets data to be populated by any of your existing systems, bespoke BLM, ERP, you name it. Wherever that data comes from, one system or many, when it's complete, cost insight generate analysis is ready to be triggered. And there are several methods for triggering a cost insight generate workflow. 
The first is based on a defined schedule. In the workflow we walked through at the beginning of today's session, we talked about a daily job analyzing components checked in within the last day. We most commonly see the defined schedule method used in PLM integrations, particularly for new product introduction use cases where there's ongoing work in that design stage. The second method is programmatic invocation via the CIG agent REST API. In this method, a REST request can be submitted to kick off analysis. We see this most commonly for the file system integration, since it can be used to respond to an external trigger from a system, an enterprise system like ERP or bespoke PLM, or based on the readiness of the input spreadsheet. The last method is manual invocation through the Cost Insight Connect UI. Given Cost Insight Connect is an administrative application that most end users would not have access to, we see this method most commonly for testing and validation when new workflows are created. Coming soon, the team is working to extend the capabilities of the Cost Insight Generate Agent REST API to accept a list of part IDs along with a job invocation request. This is extremely powerful as it shifts the paradigm. Rather than Cost Insight Generate querying your PLM to identify parts ready for analysis, you can choose to have your system push those parts to a priori on demand, perhaps through the execution of a PLM workflow. I know I'm extremely excited to continue building out the depth and breadth of Cost Insight Generate supported integration. So please reach out to me with any questions or considerations. I would love to set up some time to chat. Thank you so much for attending this session. And if you're a customer of a priori, don't forget to write a review of a priori on any of the leading software review sites, including G2, Captera, or Trust Radius to enter a contest and win some great prizes. Thank you again, and I hope you enjoy your conference.